My name is Frank Grimes, and my wife is Peggy. We have been married for 20 years, and we have two children, Mike and Emma. I am returning home after taking Emma, our youngest, to go to university. I'm looking forward to coming home and finally being able to talk to my wife about her affairs over the last 12 years. Her most recent affair is her most serious, as now that our children are gone, she is determined to leave me for her lover. I'm just turning onto our street and see our house, the lights are on, which means she's home. I pull into our driveway, get out of the car, open the front door, and walk in. My wife is sitting on the couch looking a little scared. I don't know why. I've never even raised my voice at her, let alone raised my hand at her. She looks at me and moves her gaze to the two suitcases just outside the door. I look at them, too. Peggy. Frank has left to take Emma to her first year at university. I'm sitting on the couch waiting for my lover to pick me up. My suitcases are packed, and I've left Frank a note letting him know I'm leaving him for another man, but my lover is late. I'm worried what will happen if Frank gets home first. My lover is just the latest in a string of lovers I've had over the past 12 years, but this one is special and we're in love. I think back over the last 12 years and the lovers I've had. The first lover was my tennis coach at the country club. He was so attentive and caring, it was a big shock to me when he left without even saying goodbye. Next was a work colleague, and during a work-related trip to New York, we had a little too much to drink, and I woke up in his bed. At first, I was mad at myself, but then I thought, why not? No one would know. This affair lasted over two years, always on company business trips and sometimes in his office when we were working late. Then one day he just didn't show up for work. Rumor had it that he ran off with a girl half his age who disappeared at the same time. After that was an old friend of mine from college we met by chance at a charity sale. He invited me to lunch and we sat around and reminisced about our college affair. Lunch ended up at a motel where we fucked all day. This went on for six whole months, and then one day he just never showed up at our meeting place again. That brings us to my latest lover. Tom, he's my best friend's husband. We started flirting at a barbecue he and Gina were having. It started innocently with a little flirting, then touching and finally kissing. After that first kiss, we groped each other at every opportunity we had an affectionate relationship in both his bed and ours. We were insatiable. And then we realized we were in love and needed to be together. So I'm sitting here waiting for Tom to pick me up. He's almost half an hour late, and I'm starting to worry that I've been dumped again. I look at Frank. He looks so calm and in control of himself, he seems to know something that I don't. So, Peggy, were you just going to leave with Tom, or were you going to tell me? He knows about Tom, as he found out. I point to a note on the table with my wedding rings lying on it. He looks at it and picks up the sheet. Dropping my rings on the floor, I wrinkle my nose at the implied insult. Dear Frank, as you can see, I left you for another man. It doesn't matter who. I love him and he loves me. We are going to move far away so you don't have to see me. Please don't try to find me. It will only hurt you more. We had a good marriage and good times, but in the last couple years we have drifted apart. I did love you and I know you loved me, but it's time to say goodbye. I watched as Frank read the note and smiled. Then he put the note in his briefcase and turned to me. Thank you for the note. It will make things easier when I divorce you. I won't have to show the video of you making love to Tom. What video? The one where you and Tom were in our bed, fucking like teenagers, disrespecting me and making fun of me. You must remember it was just last Tuesday when you said you were at the spa. You've been following me. How long have you known? From the beginning... I've had you under surveillance ever since you fucked your tennis coach. I know all about your lovers. You never said anything. Why? Because you would have told me the usual bullshit. It meant nothing. It was just sex. I only love you, and of course the biggest lie of all. I won't do it again. You were the one who scared and chased my lovers away, weren't you? What did you do? Threaten them or bribe them? What about Tom? You bribed him too. Why didn't you just divorce me? because I wanted the kids to grow up in a normal family atmosphere, and also in a divorce, you would get half of everything I worked for, plus spousal support and child support. I wasn't going to pay you to sleep with your lovers on my dime, so I just got rid of them. Frank, let me tell you a little story. When I was in elementary school, my best friend was a boy named George Venony. He was a little boy and was teased a lot, but I was always there to stand up for him and keep him out of trouble. Instead, I would get a black eye and a busted lip. 
Pretty soon, everyone at school realized that messing with him meant messing with me, and it was painful. We remained friends throughout college and remain friends to this day. To be a little clearer, George's mother's maiden name was Gambini, the same Gambini family. You've heard of that family's role on the east side. George's mother wanted to separate from the family and become law-abiding, so they sent him to a regular high school and college. He majored in business and law. I majored in business and accounting. Much to his mother's disappointment, he joined the family firm. And as my investment firm grew, I was hired to conduct their firm's investments, giving the appearance of respectability to their investments. In return, I made a lot of money. George also said that if there was anything he could do for me, all he had to do was just say the word. Well, when I found out about your professional tennis player, I called George and asked for his advice. He said he could take care of it, and soon the professional tennis player was gone. Oh, my God, you had him killed. I thought she was going to throw up, so I went to the kitchen and got her a bowl. Yeah, and the same thing happened with your second and third lover. Once you got serious with them, I made sure Mike and Emma had a mother. If you hadn't started thinking about leaving me, they'd still be alive, so it's your fault they're dead. She looked up at me, tears rolling down her face. I guess Tom's dead, too. No, I'm really glad you're leaving me for Tom. The kids are in college now, so they won't need you. Tom is alive and well for now, and waiting for you to join him. The look on her face was priceless considering the relief she felt. Did she really think I was going to confess to killing three men and let her live? So why didn't you just let me leave with Tom? Well, before you left, I wanted a little revenge. You remember our little dog Fifi and how I was always feeding her and taking her out to do my business. Well, the meat in the freezer labeled for dogs only was cut from your sexual partners after they died. So every time I saw her shit, it made me think that your partners were nothing but dog shit after all. But that's not all. Glutes and thigh muscles make great steaks. You even commented on how delicious they were when I grilled them. Just think about the last time you had them. This time she actually threw up, but she missed the bowl on her dressing. Well, now you know, and I have accomplished my little revenge. I hit speed dial on my disposable phone, and two large men came through the front door. These gentlemen will set you up with Tom, and you can spend the rest of your life with him, knowing you are responsible for the deaths of your former lovers. Goodbye, Peggy, and I hope you rot in hell. One of the two men took Peggy's suitcases, while the other escorted Peggy to the car waiting for them. She didn't say another word. As promised, she had spent the rest of her life with Tom. They had lived in his car for exactly as long as it had taken to get to the bottom of the old quarry ten miles out of town. Now they're all together in the same place, one cheating bitch and four wife-stealing assholes. I love my life and I have proof that my loving wife Peggy left me for another man.